everyone, hello everyone. It is Derek Floyd here. I K or Beautiful Now podcast stepping in with you to talk to you with the Beautiful Now Live. I see my boy here, Henny's on the screen right now. And uh, we want to talk to you about what's going on with the online businesses. Uh, it's an incredible space to be in right now. I'll be talking about uh, online and setting up your your uh, your business as your passion. And the gentleman I'm going to speak to today has produced many people. Uh, we're talking people like Jay Z, uh, Chris Brown. Uh, he's actually worked with Brandy and Kendrick Lamar. Uh, he's even been an actual, he is an actual professor at Morehouse College. Uh, and this gentleman's name is Henny the Business. Henny the Business. Uh, man, can you just jump in and talk to the guys out there to say, hey, what's going on? Sure. Uh, all right. Well, appreciate you, Derek, for having me. Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm so glad to be a part of Beautiful Now Project. And, uh, you know, we've done a few things over the last couple of years. So just glad to be back and uh, doing some more, you know, discussions on how we can kind of take our lives and our brands to another to another level in these in these hard times. So, hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, man. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. So with us, man, um, I just want to start off by saying, number one, um, all people that are watching today, this is our every Tuesday lunchtime chat. Uh, we come on at 1 p.m. We have special guests that talk about relevant topics to what's going on in your world. But we try to put a, a positive spin on We try to uplift you, encourage, and inspire you. So if you like what you see here with Henny and I, please like and subscribe to the channel. But pull up a chair today and just join us for Henny and I talking about what we can do to help you go to another level with your online business or what your dreams may be, what your passions may be. Um, Henny is a multi-platinum record, record record producer, uh, songwriter, and professor, and now YouTube entrepreneur. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you're doing a little bit of everything, man. I tell you, you are stepping up your game. So, uh, you know, talk to me about how long you've been in the music industry. Sure. Um, you know, I've been in the music industry 20 years now um, uh, since I was, you know, a, a student at Morehouse College trying to figure things out originally from Seattle, Washington, and uh, came down to Morehouse, and uh, man, it's, it's, you know, it's been a dream for me since, I mean, probably I was, you know, six, seven years old, wanted to be a star. I didn't know what that meant. I just knew that I wanted to be out here shining. You know? But, uh, you know, I tried my best to, uh, you know, figure out the path and understand the basics of what it was that, you know, I really loved most about, you know, what I was doing, and that was music production. So, you know, over the last 20 years, um, you know, being a music producer, songwriter, you know, an engineer, now, you know, professor of music technologist, I mean, you know, you never know where God takes you. Yeah, so, man. You know, I, I'm rolling <laughs> with it, and things have been good. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. What, what are some of the artists that you've worked with along the way? So, yeah, like you said before, um, I've worked with everybody from, let's see, yeah. Uh, Drake, Bill Wayne, Chris Brown, T Pain, uh, Kendrick Lamar, Brandy. Uh, <laughs> uh, think, I think wow, I think bro! Great <laughs> songs. Uh, uh, Fifty Cent, Young Jeezy, uh, people like J Cole. Um, man, uh, the list goes on for, for, for a few decades. Wow, <laughs> a few decades. You ate. You're aging yourself with that, bro. It's been good. It's been good. I can't complain. Oh man, well that's a blessing, man. You know, having a, a long, a long lines of success that way, uh, you know, you can get, you can get typecast, you can get pigeonholed, and thinking, yeah. well, this is gonna be my income forever, and this is how things are gonna be, and I'm gonna be a producer and make lots of money. But with all that success, when did you realize, okay? I'm going to need to do more than just produce because this doesn't last forever. You know, um, I think, you know, in, in, in any career, you're trying to figure out how it works for you and how it works for your life, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you know, as a young guy in your early 20s, you're always trying to figure out things for me, for me, for me, for me, right? You, don't, you might not have a, a, a girlfriend or a partner. You might not have, you know, kids or anything. So it's just all about you, all about doing what you need to do. And then you, you know, you find that partner, you get married, you start thinking about having children, you start thinking about what it's going to take to raise a family. And um, 
all of those things were a part of the way that I was, you know, matriculating through my career. And from, you know, the point of maybe about, I would say about eight years ago, um, I got to a place where I know me and my business partner at the time, we were kind of looking in different directions in which we wanted to go. And so I took the step out of faith and I said, you know what, um, it's been a good ride, you know, because we were a, a, a production partnership for 10 years and, you know, we went by the business. And so, you know, so I that's how you got Henny the business. That's how that came on yeah, as your yeah. title. Cause yeah. I'm like, how did you go from Henny to Henny? To, how did that even get started? Right. So, it was it was a, a production team. We went by the business. So you know, if anybody heard the business, the business, the business before a, a track would go on, that was that was us. Ah, and, okay. um, and so for uh, years, you know, it was very successful. But as I started to figure out that I needed, you know, I needed more. You know, I needed more for myself. I needed more for uh, things that I wanted to do in my career. And so I decided to take the, the step and say, you know what, let me go and, um, and try something on my own. Needless to say, uh, you know, my business partner, he was more of the person that was in the front for our, our brand. You know, I didn't understand brand building. I didn't really understand building and maintaining, keeping relationships. Uh, I didn't really understand um, a lot of things when it came to the marketing of myself. And so I kind of had to start from scratch at 32 years old. Wow. And, um, it was, it was, it was a struggle, you know, and be honest, you know, it was one of those situations to where I kind of had to relearn how to do social media because, you know, I was just, I was the creative the, the background. I was always into the tech and I was into what's new with technology and stuff, but I didn't know how to talk. So, you know, it took a long time for me to figure out that one, I needed to, I needed to not only build a platform for myself, but also build different ways of income to be able to sustain myself because now I'm missing that manager, missing that marketer, missing that seller of my music. Yeah. And so I had to figure out how to kind of do it on my own. And it took a few years of just trial and error and doing things like going places by myself or, you know, um, uh, I know at one point I was, uh, I, I Uber drove for about six months. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, and it was one of the best things that happened to me because uh, I talked to my dad and I was like, I don't know how to. I don't know how to do an elevator pitch to people. Like, <laughs> and you got to have an elevator pitch, man. Yeah, you, 90 you seconds is all you right. get. You better get it um, out. <laughs> and, and so I, um, you know, doing that, um, you know, six something years ago, it was it was humbling because, you know, I'd be picking up people who knew I was, and they'd be like, yo, you need to do an Uber driver. I was like, yes. Uh, <laughs> and they look at you like, didn't you just have that hit on the radio, and now you're driving an Uber? What? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> and it wasn't. As much as um, you know, I need I I would like I needed to have a little bit of extra extra income for you know the kids the, the things that we were going through and making sure that not only was I relying on the royalties and the publishing but I was you know finding other ways to get income but at the same time I was trying to figure out ways of how to you know really have short conversations and build my energy with a person quick mm -hmm. uh, and so it built me up that way for a while and. Um, Man, I'm telling you, little things like that allowed me to get into a space where I was confident enough to try out YouTube, and that was a struggle for a while. But you know, um, you know through it all. Well, you you've um, grown that. We'll talk about that in a second, man. Yeah, you you so definitely said that you game there. It's been, it's been yeah, it's been a while. So. Well, you diversified into more than just music. You started teaching at Morehouse. You know, shout out to the house. Uh, yes, sir. But man, you know that's a huge, huge push. How did becoming a professor about music technology and building a brand, how did that come about? Well, you know, um, I have a friend of mine who's now my business partner now, my man, Kenar Garrett. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, he's taken over the music production program over at Morehouse, and he had a workshop and a couple of classes that he was teaching. And early on, he brought me in to come, you know, be a, a, a speaker, you know, for one of his classes. And I felt the energy in the room of being back on, you know, on campus, talking to the students, talking to the brothers there, and just trying to show them that it was possible for them to get, you know, their career started even at that young early age. And, sure. you know, as more I, the more that I did on YouTube, the more that I became, um, you know, uh, brand conscious and doing things on my own. You know, he gave me more opportunity to come in. He was like, yo, I think there's an opportunity for you to come uh, start teaching some of these classes as well. 
And so I started doing that, and then things started going really well, and the reviews for my classes were out the roof. And so we started teaching, you know, these seminars, classes, and, you know, some of these courses together. And as someone who was highly sought after, you know, courses to take, classes to take, workshops to take over there at the college. So um, it was, a lot of it came from me, you know, starting up and doing things my way online and being, you know, just being transparent with the world, understanding technology, understanding, you know, the present, the past, and the future when it comes to music, music profession, music entertainment, and, you know, strategy when it comes to building your online presence. And so, so that's, so know, that's, where we, know what yeah, that's where we yeah. curtail into because, you know, this particular segment is about building an online presence and, and taking what you're passionate about, you know, you're obviously passionate about music, about production, and taking that and building that into an online business because at this day and age, man, you know, right now during this horrible coronavirus nonsense, the only platforms that are succeeding are online. You know, you can't even go to the, you can't even go to the movie. You can't do, you know, everything you got to do, you got to do online. Other than Walmart and, and Target and Lowe, you know, those guys stay open forever. Right. But everybody yeah. else, if you don't have an online presence, you're not making any money. Uh, I don't care how good you are, what you do. So, yeah. you know, I wanted to kind of bring that into a perspective to say, hey, what are your passionate about? What can you do uh, to build an online presence for that? I think when I look at what you've done. You know, yeah. you said you started YouTube how many years ago? Uh, let's see, 2000, end of 2016. So okay, so you've been at it almost four years. Four years. Yeah. Did you have any idea it would be over 80,000 followers right now? Uh, <laughs> 80,000 people want to hear what you got to say. It's funny, right? <laughs> because being in music and having success in there, you kind of have a confidence that you can do certain things. I felt like I had the confidence to do pretty well on YouTube, but... Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure of what it was going to take and, you know, um, what I would actually be sought after and, and be talking about, right? right. I started right. out YouTube because, um, you know, five years ago, I was I was sitting there, right, in that transition period trying to figure out um, in my mid-30s, and I see these young guys that are in their 20s, and I'm trying to compete with them as a music producer, and they're young, and they're vibrant, and they got a lot more time on their hands than I did, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so, Cause you, you, know, you like, got family and kids now, you can't be messing around. I'm like, yeah, and, you know, I, mean, I know a lot of guys, they have kids and other things, they're trying to do their things, but uh, I really wanted to be, you know, an engaging uh, husband and father just as much as I was in business. And so, uh, you know, what, what were the instruments, what were the tech that I could use to, to be able to do both? Mm -hmm. And uh, it just so happened to be the iPad when I picked it up and try to figure out exactly what I could do with it, I was like, okay, it's, it's more, there's more things that you can do with this than most people think. And, and, and I see, I, I, I just threw an image up there with you, with your yeah. iPad, and and that was the first one I saw when you were doing it with the small keyboard, and you took over the revolution yeah. with this iPad thing, man. Like, nobody yeah. saw that coming. You were a forerunner in that. So, it's just amazing to see what you, you kind of saw before everybody else saw how big that was going to be, you know? And I think a lot of people, you know, they get fearful of trying new things when they're so comfortable in doing a, doing anything a certain way. And I just said, you know what, let me take a stab at this, let me close the studio up, and let me just try to go, you know, all the way in right. on what you can do with this with this device. And so after about six, seven months, and I started to get, you know, people from from people laughing at me in the studios when I came in with just the iPad, <laughs> a little mid keyboard to people starting to hear what was coming out of it. And they're like, yo, how are you doing that? Right. Um, I was like, okay, what is the what is the way for me to show this? And then I was like, well, let me just show it on Instagram because at that time, Instagram went from 15 seconds to 60 seconds in video. Wow. Uh, the length of video. And so I was like, well, maybe I have a, a, a platform here to be able to showcase what's going on. Right. So I came up with this idea of doing this uh, series called Adventures in Beat Making. Okay. And, uh, and that took off. It, it was just like every <laughs> week, I, 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 I said to myself, every week, Wednesday, 12.30, we're going to drop a new video showing what's going on in my life, right. showing what's going on in my world, what's going on with these new apps and this new technology and why you can take your iPad and your music and go anywhere with you and still be professional. And it started to take off, right? The, the problem was I wasn't monetizing. Exactly. Um, I did it for 50. <laughs> I did it for 52 weeks straight and, oh. you know, I, yeah, for well, an entire year and it wasn't a lot that I brought in, but right. I started to build that presence. 
and I, I put it on Instagram, but then I also put it on Facebook, mm -hmm. and I also put it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And throughout that, I started to get more comfortable and showing uh, you know people a little other things. I could do a little bit more longer content right. on YouTube, and I started to see the views started to go up on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. by the end of that year, I said, you know what? I need to switch my epicenter of my brand to YouTube instead of Instagram. Exactly. So that's when I started to really figure out, you know, what are all the ways that I can passively have passive income in, you know, online streaming. And, so, um, so and before you finish that thought, passive yeah. income, let's explain to the viewers, because you and I have talked about it multiple times, you know, at this day and age, you got to have income that's coming in while you're sleeping. You get yeah. a passive income. You, you, you can't trade time for money forever and expect to make it over the top. Talk about what passive income means to you. Yeah, so, you know, I definitely learned it early on as a music producer because, you know, if you make records and, you know, you put them out there in the world, you do all of that, right? You do the records, you make it, and you put it out. And if it becomes successful, uh, you know, your royalties and your publishing uh, will be considered passive income. That's income that, you know, you don't necessarily have to put the hours and the time and the energy and the, and the stress into. It's already out there. It's already working. It's already collecting you money. And depending on how your pay period is and how it's being set up, you're getting paid, you know, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, regardless of what, what the situation is, you're getting money for, for work that you did, you know, uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. And so you're not, you know, uh, the more that you can do that, the more that you can, you know, I won't say relax, but the more that you can take time to figure out what else means, what, what else things mean to you. Mm -hmm. And so for YouTube, I was like, I started doing the research on, you know, the types of people who are making um, substantial income on YouTube and their platforms and, you know, these online uh, influencers and these content creators. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is it that makes a good online content creator influencer? And I really came up with three, uh, three ways that most people can start to build that brand as you, as you relate it to passive income. Okay. And, you know, and that's to entertain, to educate, and to motivate. Right. So, so stop, stop right there. Let it, let him hear him again. Right. Let's take some notes off, y'all. So, so it's to entertain. Number one. Yeah. Okay. So to entertain, right? To be able to show off what your skills are, show off what people uh, love about you, whether it's your charisma, whether it's your, you know, your skills as a musician or even a chef or a trainer or whatever. Like you have skills. We all have skills that mm -hmm. people would seek. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you if you even know that you have things that you can bring to the world, that's how you entertain people. You got I mean, you got to show it off. You have to <laughs> be a show off and not be afraid to be a show off. Right, right? that's one right. part of it. But at the same time, you have to educate. You have to show people how you're doing things, mm -hmm. or you know, give them tutorials or give them instructions on how you know you're doing what you're doing because there's a lot of people out there who's going to be influenced by you and they're going to want to know how you did it right and then you want to motivate right you want to show them that like it wasn't that easy to be able to do this you want to show them what how long it took or the mess ups or the <laughs> transparency of things being you know uh, uh, uh you know how, how long it took right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you do all three of those things you motivate people you educate people and entertain you're going to start to build a brand that people trust mm -hmm. right that people mm -hmm. seek yeah. And then, you know, over time, as long as you grow, uh, as long as your audience grows with you, you're going to be able to, in, you know, uh, influence them in ways and bring new things to them. So mm. that's kind of how I looked at it. Yeah. And, and when it came to passive income, I said, okay, if I do those three things, what are the business parts that I have to do? Okay. Right. Yeah. With YouTube in passive income, I started to, you know, look on the, uh, on, on the web and see that there's a lot of ways that you can make passive income off of starting a brand. And uh, I'm, I'm right now, I think I have about five to six ways of passive income per month that I do for just being on YouTube and social media. And the first is, you know, with, with YouTube ads, right? The ads that come on before a video or mm -hmm. in the middle of a video or regardless, right? Like that you're going to see these ads, right? That's how right. a lot of people are getting paid once they get a certain amount of subscribers right? so do that do, do they ask you about which ads come on because I've seen ads come on a video and I thought who put this ad in front of this video I'm about to watch does it just I think it, it, it depends on how big your brand is oh, and okay. what your brand speaks of right? gotcha, gotcha. Um, I don't know exactly what my video what um, and <laughs> what advertisers will pay right they say 
put me in front of a lot of people who watch this. Gotcha. Right? Okay, right. so it's so categorized things. Yeah. It's IK, IK Multimedia, and we're talking about the ice stream, right? Right. And they show a video of the ice stream. You know, it'd be a good place to say, you know, if they're putting marketing dollars into YouTube, they say, hey, put my video, put my advertisement in front of those who would like this type of product. Gotcha. You know, so gotcha. you don't get the opportunity to, to choose and pick, mm -hmm. but I know that YouTube usually tries to figure out ways. There's an algorithm that happens to it. Yeah, I knew that. They're pretty crazy yeah. like that. All right, go ahead. What's so, number two? I'm sorry about that. I just wanted to ask that question because I've always wondered that. So, yeah, yeah. So, YouTube ads was number one, right? Mm -hmm. Number two for me was um, setting up an online store. Right? Okay. So, if you go to like anythebusiness.com, you know, a lot of people are selling whatever. It's, sometimes it's merchandise, sometimes it's digital products, sometimes it's both. So, I've sold everything from, you know, a secure the vibe type t shirt to, um, you know, different um, production packs where I'm selling my drums and sounds and melody loops okay. or even my filters because I show people how to edit on, you know, their mobile devices, edit video. So maybe they want a new filter and I have these filters for sale or, you know, maybe if I want to do one, you know, on one type of one-on-one -on -one online courses, you can get it all from my site. So, you know, having a site is another place for you to have digital products that you put up there once and it just keeps going, right? And I check my email and I just, you know, PayPal just keeps buzzing off because the more people watch your video, the more people go check out who you are and then they want to say, you know, I'm going to invest uh, my money into supporting this or I, I believe that what he's selling might be something that I'm looking for. So that's number two, right? Okay, okay. Now, if you're selling products, right, or you're talking about products, or you're talking about any type of thing that, you know, somebody can buy off of Amazon, can okay. sign up for an Amazon affiliate page, right? Okay. All of these things require steps, right? Between like setting up your business, making sure that you, you know, have an have a have an actual business, whether you're a sole proprietor or LLC or whatever. Okay. You still gotta have your business set up with your state and you know the IRS and all of those things, right? Okay. But you know, number three, you know, if somebody watches my video and I'm talking about the IK you know, uh, I rig stream and then I show the link mm -hmm. in my description on YouTube, mm -hmm. even if somebody clicks on that and says, you know, like, ooh, I can't afford that, maybe, maybe I can, you know, uh, afford something a little bit cheaper. Um, just the fact that they went through the route from my video to my link to Amazon and to whatever they want to purchase, mm -hmm. I get a percentage oh, of wow. that purchase. That's crazy. I didn't so, even know that. Wow. Yeah, so Amazon <laughs> Affiliates was number three. Yeah. The other one was, uh, which is, is slowed down, but it used to be um, the same with at, um, Amazon, I mean, Apple in the, in the apps, okay. right? So if I talk about an app, there's an app affiliate, you know, with Apple, and um, if somebody were to buy an app from the link that you sent, you get a percentage off of that. Wow. So that's number four. So you've got, you know, you've got the ad revenue on um, YouTube, you know what I'm saying? You've got your site. Mm -hmm. You know, you got Amazon, you got Apple, um, and some of these other places, right, will give you affiliates. Like if you, you know, that's why you see people doing like Squarespace or sure. um, uh, uh, any of these other things inside of the video. Because, you know, if somebody goes, signs up, they'll get a percentage and a kickback off of that. And the fourth is just really doing sponsorship with brands, right? Okay. So regardless if you're getting free product or they're, you know, they're paying you to talk about a product. Or they're, you know, they're bringing you out to speak on something that, you know, that they want you to speak on or do whatever. Mm -hmm. That's a whole new sponsorship, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to say, you know, um, you know, this company's going to send me out product, or this this company's going to pay me to speak out their product, mm -hmm. and um, you know, they, things just keep coming, right? It's just you're not all you're doing is talking about the things that you love to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. um, and start building the passive income ways for that money to just flow in or situations that flow in. The more you do it, the more consistent you are, the more that you engage with the community in your comments. If you're doing live, engage with the live. Mm -hmm. um, people will start to trust that brand, start to read those comments and be like, you know, this is somebody who uh, not only I recommend uh, to my friends, but uh, you know, maybe recommend to people that I don't know. So you start doing all of that, all of those things start are building a healthy a of getting a uh, a five piece source yeah. of income that comes in monthly that can start to help really sustain. You. Yeah. So that's that's a that's a huge uh, mouthful just starting off of that, but recognizing yeah. that um, 
they have to build something that they can either sell later, like you can reuse again, like content, like content, like a yes. tutorial. You only build the yes. tutorial one time, but you can resell that tutorial for thousands of years because it's one yes. piece of, you know, one piece of product, so to speak, that can be resold. So when we yes. talk about taking your passion and making it a business, you need to create something in your business or from your passion that you can do once or twice, package that thing, whether it's teaching them, um, educating them, whether it's, it's um, entertaining them, what you're talking, all the things you talked about, but it has to be something that, they, that you can reuse and redo, almost just like your music. When you send, when you yeah. when you create a track with music and you send it out to where it goes, that track goes out to Spotify, whatever, whatever. Each time it's it's spun, you get a little something back from that, and you only did that track once. So it's so music in itself, in a lot of ways, is a passive income because you you create the music and then you let it go and it, it yeah. brings you money back on that. So. Um, I wanted to encourage our subscribers out there that whatever you feel like you can offer that no one else can do, uh, find find a need that's not being answered. You know, like if you can create an answer to some problem that someone isn't doing that you can do yourself, that you do better, and you can package that, boom, there it becomes your business. Uh, so that's just, I just feel like people feel like, oh, well, I can never start a business. Well, don't think that. It's not as hard as you think right now. Um, you yeah. know, what does... What do you think somebody needs to even begin looking at creating business? What would be the first thing you tell them to do? Like, what would they um, need? Do they need a lawyer? What do they got to do? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the first thing is just to figure out, like you said, what is something that you could bring to the world that you might have a different outlook on. You know, um, you know, before you just say, you know, I want to be whatever. You know, see, you know, see what's out there and see what your, you know, see what your competition might be. See if it's something that you're willing to put the time, the effort, the grit, the resilience, you know, everything into when times get hard, when times get rough, um, uh, especially in these times because so many people are trying to um, fight for your attention. Mm -hmm. and that's where we're at when wow. it comes to social media consumption and all of those things. So you've got to come with something that is unique, right? Now, <laughs> yes, you know, setting up a business, you know, um, I've set up multiple and, if, you know, you, like with, 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 you know, you got to think about the state that you're in, sure. you know, the type of incorporation laws, what type of business you want to set up. It's really not as hard as you think. And just like everything else, you know, you, you can go to YouTube University and figure that thing out within five or ten. <laughs> you, you, you know, know YouTube um, has got everything, man. There's something exactly. there for everybody. <laughs> and so, and so for there, you know, don't be afraid to, to start small. You know, if, um, this new online brand that I've created so niche right it's so like it was just about using ipad and ios devices to do music pro to do music production professionally and you yeah. call it a word in there before you keep doing you call it a word niche that's a big yeah. keyword on youtubers that talk about find your niche find your niche that's a big thing to talk about right exactly like i mean you know i, I know that a lot of us want to get the views and they want to you know they just want to get to hundreds of thousands, millions of subscribers, mm -hmm. right? And you look at some of the people who are doing, you know, super well on YouTube, it's because the audience is huge, right? Right. But it's also very crowded. Mm -hmm. um, and you can find, you know, your niche, something that you, you like, something that you're doing. And there's most likely other people who maybe not even thought about that <laughs> or are into that, right? And, um, you know, um, so over time, you know, I just kept doing that and knowing that, yeah, I could just be talking about being a music producer or doing the music producer podcast mm -hmm. or, you know, any of these things that probably could have got a lot more viewers, but it's not where my heart was lying me, right. you know, what was leading me to be able to, to keep going because even then, um, you know, you get successful in all of this, you know, you're still going to have to keep going and what's going to keep bringing you back. Yeah. You know, over yeah. and over. And, yeah. And for me, it's it's always been the technology, the new stuff, what's going on. And so when me and Derek have conversations offline, and we're talking about things like how do we help people get the best online streaming look, yeah. the yeah. lighting and right, the, the right. video and the audio. <laughs> That's where we're at right now. You know, I mean, so many people are going live. So many people want to build that relationship between them and the people that follow them or the people that they want to follow them mm -hmm. and i you know somebody said it on a podcast it's like yo you know doing the zoom call doing going live you know having the lighting having the audio stuff like, being on a good suit yeah you know that, and uh, that's a good way to think about it yeah <laughs> you know, you it's like 
I know there's a ton of kids out there that are still going to have to have Zoom interviews. Or yeah, interviews. man, that's coming. That's yeah. super coming right now. You know, you got to look, you got to look the part, you got to sound the part because if you stand out, you're going to get, you think you're going to go further than that next guy. So mm-hmm. it's not as hard as you think, but the things that you do want to invest in, uh, to me, you know, in, in, in this day and age and what we're going in is learning how to, you know, uh, properly, you know, put yourself on, whether it's through video, audio, you know, a little bit of live streaming, whether you're still doing, you know, maybe you're still a writer, you yeah, know, maybe you're yeah. still a blogger, you know, maybe you're somebody who doesn't like to get in front of the camera, but you like to speak, so maybe it's just audio. Regardless, everything is out there for you, and if you do a little bit of Google searching and a little bit of internal searching, yeah. you're going to find that. So, so th- th- this curtail a couple of things, and we'll get ready to close it because it's almost what's one yeah. thirty now. We always try to do thirty minutes, and I appreciate you folks that stay on a little bit longer. But I want to try to keep them at thirty minutes so you can have a lunchtime chat and get back to work at two. Um, yes, you know, do you think it's smart to try to start a business now, even in this economy? Because people are like, why would I go out and try to start something in the middle of all this? But yet, I've heard, and you can echo this. I forget who told where I read it from was that. There are, there are millionaires being made at this time because certain things happen oh, yeah. and things like this that if you if you get into it right now, it, you never know what could happen after that point, you know? I'm telling you, uh, you know, people are scared, right? Mm-hmm. People are losing their jobs. People are getting their, you know, their salaries and stuff cut in half and all of this craziness. And so, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. And I remember two times of being uncertain in my career. One, when I was a senior in college and 9-11 hit. And everybody was just like, oh, my God, what's going on? Yeah. How's the world going to change, right? And people were, you know, you know, we were seniors in college trying to figure out what's next. Or 10 years later, in the, in, you know, the economy just you yeah. know, goes, uh, goes down and, and nobody can find jobs in the housing market. Everything just goes to crap. And, you know, there's uncertainty there. People are losing jobs. So there's, there's always going to be times in, in our lives where, you know, that, 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 that comfortable position that you had might not be as comfortable. Mm-hmm. Now, what is it about your life that you love? What is it about something that you want to build upon? And what are some of the ways that you can bring that to life now? Mm-hmm. You know, if you're not feeling that certain, if you're feeling like there's something calling you, this would be a perfect time to try to start a business, you know? And if you want to look more forward and you're thinking like, you know, what's going on in the, the tech space, mm-hmm. you know, think about virtual reality. Think mm-hmm. about like immersive audio. Mm-hmm. Think about why you know, uh, when they then when they release uh, news uh, headlines saying that you know concerts and games and you know sporting events mm-hmm. might not see the light of day until yeah. fall of 2021. Right. You know, right. what does that mean? What does that look like? Techn- yeah. yeah. What the where what is it? Where where can the technology be the gap? Mm-hmm. Right. And so you know everybody's been talking about virtual reality. VR bars, and immersive audio. And VR bars? Over. I haven't heard that one yet. What? Oh, yeah. Can I get a VR virtual drink? <laughs> it, yeah. be- it better <laughs> feel real good. I'm VR buzz. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, if you start thinking about the fact that people are getting very comfortable, even even these uncomfortable times, being by themselves, being in their own space, being you know away from people, you know, but they still want to engage with others. Mm-hmm. There's going to be technology coming. Sure, I know for that, sure, right? sure. That is going to bring people into more of the virtual space. You know, more of the immersive thing going on. And so, if you start thinking about what does that mean, mm-hmm. how can my business even work around that? What is sure. that? You know, maybe you're into that. Maybe you're not. But I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of companies that are trying to figure out the best ways to get their line, get their stuff online. Sure. And do, do live things that are great, man. I wouldn't be afraid at all. It might take some time, but you know, I would. This would be. This is the perfect time to step into things online, things virtual, things, all things, all things. Things. Well, man, I sure do appreciate you just stepping in and giving just a piece of wisdom of what you've done, and, yes, and the, you know, you've been doing it like you said for. You've been doing the online component for four years, but you've been a producer for much yes. longer. And uh, you know, for this segment, I want to leave the people with something that's. Encouraging something that they can get to, that that, that they can inspire to, because this is we're just regular people. We're not, you know, yeah. we're 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 not trying to be anything that you can't be. So we want to in, inspire right. you to do what we're doing, which is just reaching out, taking the talents and gifts that we have, putting it in a space where we can share it with others. And there's a business in that. So whether you do hair or whether you have skincare or whatever the thing is that you're 
good at, that you want to kind of get out of, that you have a dream for, a passion for, take that thing, figure out a way to package it so you can create passive income for it, and jump your butt online as soon as you can so that people can start to see it. Um, Henny, man, I know you've got quite a few things going on in your plan, but if, you, if they want to reach out to you to hear more about what you've done or maybe get some of your packs for music or hear more about what you're doing on the, the brand online side, where do they go? How do they get a hold of you? Really in business. Yeah. Where are you? <laughs> uh, whether it's uh, Instagram, you know, whether it's YouTube, whether it's any of the business.com, Facebook. Okay. Um, you know, I try to make sure that it, they're all the same. So, H E N Y T H A B I Z N E S S, like it is on the screen. Nice, nice. And uh, yeah, so that, that, that's where you can find it. And what do you have coming up for us? What should we be looking for from Henny? What's, what's the future looking like for this? I, obviously, with so much going on, I'm sure you have new things coming your way. There's a lot of new things, um, and there's a lot of things that, you know, we're still working on. But, um, you know, I'm still you know, creating uh, a, a music production um, all the time, mm -hmm. working with some new artists, working with artists that, you know, um, that you've heard of, as well as some really interesting things with... Um, you know, things that I'm doing with sponsors and companies, as well as what I'm doing on the education space over that morehouse. So there's a lot of new stuff coming out. And I mean, but you know, when, where, how, <laughs> you still got to get to that around these times. But I yeah. mean, just like, like I said, with everything else, just, you know, just know that uh, nothing is, nothing is forever, you know, and some of these times, a lot of us are, I'll get frustrated pulling our hair out, but these are times to look inward mm -hmm. and figure out how to be the best of yourself. So that's, that's a perfect statement. Yeah. You gotta look inward, yeah. figure out how to be the best of you. When you're the best of yeah. you at you, no one can do you better. There's some value in that. But people yeah. are trying to be other people and we miss it. But if you be the best you, I know that sounds so cornball, but it's just real, right? And you be yeah. the best yeah. you. You have value on this planet. You have something to, to offer. You figure out what yeah. you are and the rest will come along the way. Um, all right, well, we, again, we appreciate you coming on, and, and if you enjoy the content out there, please hit a like and a subscribe to the channel. Um, and, of course, yeah. subscribe to Henny's channel, most definitely, because he's always got great content coming. Uh, and uh, there was a great video he just put out a couple of days ago, how to how to put together yeah. an iOS package to do video, <laughs> which I was so yeah. sad. I, 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 he'll tell you why I was sad, but it was a great video. It worked out yeah. great. He's always got great content like that, so check that out for sure. And as always... Be safe out there. We want to keep you encouraged, inspired. And uh, hey, shake your hand. Wash your hands, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful, but wash your hands, all right? Take care of each other. Take care now. Bye-bye, guys.